What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to day 81 of Autodesk Fusion. You can't even really see it says day anymore. It says die. Um, anyways, today we're working on is using some tools that I haven't used yet to make something that I might potentially use in the future. So one thing I'd like to do with these last 20-ish days of Fusion is to build things that would be useful. And one of those are being a two-part mold. So part of the uh, initiative I'm going to try to push in my engineering classroom is more of sustainability practices in reusing and recycling things. And so what I thought about was how can we recycle paper in such a way um, to be reusable? One thing I came across was, was people making planters and so out of paper. And so what they do, they recycle the paper, they make this paper paste, and then they would push it into these two-part molds clamp it down, and then once you're done, you have a vase or a, a planter, at least, for uh, some outside stuff. And so what I'm gonna try to do is, actually I'm gonna 3D print this once I get my hands back on my 3D printer, and uh, using some, I say, rudimentary techniques and trying to try do some more research, I'm gonna try to build one of these vases and see if we can get something up and running. Uh, but in the meantime, we have to build it first. And so what we're gonna do is, we're going to build what we're going to make a mold out of, and then we're gonna build a mold around it. And so how do we do that? Well, first thing I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna click on New Design, and then I want you to create whatever 3D geometry you're gonna to want to create a mold out of. For me, I'm just gonna use a hexagonal pattern for a variety of different reasons. One of those being is that, um, I think they would look a little bit nicer. They stack a little bit neater if they're side by side. And so what we can do then is just take this hexagonal piece, extrude it on up. Let's make it uh, three inches tall. Now let's do four inches since the diameters. There we go. And then we're gonna click okay. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just gonna just shell out this top piece and uh, let's do three tenths. Um, that way we just have a nice shell of a potted plant for us to work with. All right, next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna keep this as a bot. You notice I didn't make it a component. And what I'm also gonna do now is I'm gonna create a new component, or sorry, yeah, sorry, create a new sketch. On this top piece right here, what I'm gonna do is create a box to go all the way around. And so, I'm gonna kind of eyeball what those dimensions should be. And so I know that the diameter of that is um, two inches. And so I'm gonna do, let's do uh, 5.5 by, let's try this again. I'm just make sure everything's going okay. Yeah, all right, everything's good. Create a new sketch on that top piece. I'm gonna click on rectangle from center, keep that center aligned with my mold, and let's do a five by five. That looks okay. All right, we're gonna go and click on finish sketch, and we're gonna extrude this geometry upwards, half an inch, but we're gonna do a two-sided extrusion, and we're just gonna cover the whole thing. We're gonna go all the way down, plus a half inch, for the plate and instead of this we're just going to click on new body and what that's going to do for us is we have a body with inside a body so if i if i take that new outside piece away that inside is still there so how do we how do we interact with both these i'm going to right click on that second body and i'm just going to make this 50 percent opaque that way it's still active it's still there and i can interact um, and then we're just gonna continue going on from here. Now this part might look a little bit different based off of what geometry you're trying to do. And so I found this to be the quickest method for this hexagonal piece. First thing I'm gonna do now is I'm going to modify, I'm gonna click on combine, and I'm going to take this outside piece and the target or the tool body is gonna be that inside piece and we're gonna do a cut. And so what it's gonna do is then take all of that geometry that's on the inside on that body 
and just cut it away from that block. We're going to click on make it a new component, keep the tools, click OK. And so now what I've got here, let's make those bodies inactive, is I have this component that has got some inside pieces. And so how do we then interact with this thing to uh, let us separate this mold? Because now we've got a mold, but a hexagonal piece on the inside, but there's nothing I can do with it. So what I'm going to click on now is I'm going to construct, and we're going to do offset plane. And we're going to offset until we get a plane that is going to be where our mold is going to break at. This is going to look different based off what you're doing, but I found this to probably be the most helpful of ways for us, on, on mine at least. And we're going to put a plane right there. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to click on Modify, and now we're going to Split Body. And so I'm going to do this body right now, this component, is, is one whole body. And what we're going to do is we're going to split this body through that plane I just made. And it's going to kind of tish take a saw right on through it, click OK. Now it did make three bodies for me. And the reason for that is because is that inside piece and that outside piece, uh, depending on how you interact, is going to cut and make three pieces for me. So what I need to do here now is find what these bodies represent. So bodies 1 and 3 represent the top piece of my mold. And body number 2 represents the bottom piece. So we're going to call this whole thing, um, let's call this hex mold. And this body 2, we're actually going to right click and we're going to create a component from that body. Now, it's still in that assembly of the hex mold, but now it's its own separate component. And we're going to call this thing, you know, hex bottom. Okay, now what that allows me to do is I should be able to move it and now it's out of my way. Okay, but for now I'm just going to make it inactive. The next thing I need to do is connect my top, two top pieces together because they're technically considered separate bodies. So we're going to click on combine again. And the target body is going to be this, the tool body is going to be that, and we're going to click on join. And we're just going to add those two bodies together. We're going to create a new component out of it. And you notice that new component got kicked outside of my hex mold. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag and drop and throw it right on in there. So we got hex top. We have hex bottom. And if I make both of these active, we can see the thickness of that mold is the thickness that I set when I shelled my hex earlier. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I believe that's going to be it for this mold. We can see everything kind of works as needed. There are going to be some extra bodies uh, based on how you do this, and you can just make them active or you can delete them because from those referencing pieces, we have everything that we need. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that'll be it for this video. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, throw them down in the comment section. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. It helps out a ton. And I will be looking forward to, for the next 20-ish days or so, continue making some of these projects that are not solving an arbitrary problem, but actually solve a true problem or something that is usable within the realm of my classroom. Because of that, some of these videos will take a, a few more than just a day to produce. I have some awesome ideas coming up with plastics, but this one I can just pump out real quick looking at some paper products. All right, guys, that's it. If you have any comments or concerns, you know how to reach out to me, and I will see you on the next video.